Hey, what's up, everyone? It is Lucy here, joined as always on these Hearthstone extravaganzas, which is what I like to call them, mm -hmm. uh, by Cam Shea. Hi, Lucy. How are you doing? I am well, thank you, Cam. How are you? Excellent, thank you. Wonderful. Now, today we are going to take a look at a new Hearthstone deck. Now, for those of, of you who are, who are sort of new to our little ongoing Hearthstone mm -hmm. series, basically what we do, we're, we're just kind of trying to give you an entry level introduction to some of the more sort of popular decks that are being played right now. Yeah, I, I, I would expect you to be playing Hearthstone pretty regularly and have a pretty good understanding of what a lot of the cards are and stuff. But maybe you don't follow the meta super closely, uh, maybe, you know, you just play casually. But this is for people who are interested in Hearthstone, but maybe yeah, don't have that level of understanding um, that you know, a lot of the hardcore people have. It's kind of a bridging kind of thing, which kind of suits our levels, I think, Lucy. Yeah, well, in particular mine, being the clueless Hearthstone player that I am. All right, so today we are going to look at Secret Paladin. Yes. Which is actually a deck that I'm relatively familiar with. Oh, yeah? Uh, in comparison to some of the others that we've been through. Uh, a friend of mine built it for me and just handed it over, and I actually got to level 11. Yeah, right. Rank 11. Nice. Um, a couple of seasons that was, ago. That was though, a while so ago. Yeah, it's 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 ov it's obviously changed a fair bit since then, so I'm very interested. Um, well, back when you were playing it, uh, I think there were kind of two competing versions of the deck. There was a much mm. more aggro um, version that pretty much topped out at Mysterious Challenger, uh, and it was a lot faster. And there was a mid-range version, and the dust is settled, and the mid-range version is the version of Secret Paladin that people play these days. Right, right. Uh, All right, well, let's take a look at it. But funnily enough, I haven't played much Secret Paladin until prepping for this. Right. Because, because it got so popular, I was like, well, I'm not going to be part of that. <laughs> it's like when Face Hunter was doing <laughs> really well. I'm going to be counterculture. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to play Face Hunter. Yeah. Uh, but I've, yeah, I've had lots of fun with it. Anyway, uh, at the core of the deck, obviously, are the secrets. Paladin has a lot of very low-cost um, secrets, and on their own, they, you know, not really worth a slot in your deck. They're not really, um, there's just better things you could put in, but Mysterious Challenger is the card that made this deck possible. Mysterious Challenger is the key to any secret Paladin it's deck. It's the linchpin to this deck, mm -hmm. and it basically just pulls out uh, like five or so, depending on you know what secrets you're running, secrets just onto the field of play. So not only is it a six-six body for six, which is fine, uh, it just gives you all this incredible extra value. Now, or in New Zealand, we like to say the six-six value for six. That's correct. Yes, very nice. Yeah. I just thought <laughs> I'd just add a little bit of local flavor. Uh, of course, it's you know you, you you to get to that turn, you might be drawing into your secrets as you go. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why it's kind of like a mid-range Paladin build. So it's actually got very good kind of on-curve minions to help you get to the point where you have your Mysterious Challenger play. And that's kind of like, not necessarily a swing turn, but it, it can be. You know, right. that's really where you can um, you can take over the game. So the key secrets, there's most variations run five different secrets. Uh, and we'll kind of see them in action in some of the game footage in a little bit. Uh, but just quickly, they are Avenge, which uh, uh, buffs a uh, friendly minion when one of your minions dies. Competitive Spirit, which buffs your entire board at the start of your turn. Noble Sacrifice, which takes an attack when uh, an enemy minion or hero, uh, if they're using a weapon, attacks. Uh, Redemption, which brings one of your minions back to life with one health. And Repentance, which drops an enemy minion to one health when it's played to the field. Um, so that's the, the, the kind of center of the deck. But it's not just Mysterious Challenger that um, that you know that works well with the secrets. Uh, you've also got Secret Keeper in the early game to try and snowball. So if you have Secret Keeper in your opening hand, it means that drawing into your secrets uh, and thereby kind of take you know filling your hand with low cost spells that aren't going to do very much to directly affect the board, it's not quite as big a deal because you can potentially have uh, you know buff your Secret Keeper up into something quite formidable. And really, this this deck is about having minions that stick to the board. Yeah. Because if you can do that, then you can get your secrets off and you can start to snowball. Uh, and so that's kind of why you've got uh, cards like Haunted Creeper uh, and Shield of Minibot, because they're quite hard to remove. And so the odds of you getting one of your secrets activated and kind of starting to, to build some momentum is improved. Colcam is exactly the same kind of deal. 
Uh, it just allows you to, you know, say you had a shield of money, midi bot out, you can attack with it, lose the divine shield, then play your cog hammer, Get another re divine, divine shield, shield yep. and then you've got a weapon in your hand as well. Uh, knife juggler is a staple in this deck uh, because of muster for battle mm -hmm. and also because of haunted creeper. Should they always be played together as a general rule? Like, if you've got a knife juggler in your hand and you don't draw a muster for battle, I mean, is he worth playing at all? Or? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously dependent on how you see the turns going. Right. But there are some matchups where you, you know, you can't really afford to just hero power on two. Yeah. Uh, and if knife juggler is the only card in your hand, you might just want to get it out there because your opponent has to remove it. Yeah. You know, knife juggler is a big threat uh, because if you play it on two, they're expecting muster on three. So it can change the way your opponent plays. doesn't always work out for you, but um, yeah, in general, you don't want to be holding it until turn five, you right. know? Yep. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, in terms of like the core of the deck, uh, Consecration is kind of optional, but can be good anti-aggro. Uh, Keeper of Alderman is ge generally being run in most of these, which is a very interesting minion. You'll see a cool play with Keeper uh, in the footage. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're kind of you know, Mysterious Challenger, obviously, and then Tyrion and Dr. Boom. A couple of big late game threats. Yep. And then in terms of like, so this is this example is from um, Tempo Storm's site as, as per normal. Uh, uh, put together by Flamingo Bums. Oh, <laughs> um, but delightful. I, but I had a bit of a look at what um, some of the popular streamers are running at the moment. Mm -hmm. So Life Coach's variant has two Keeper of Aldermans uh, instead of one. It has two Sludge Belchers and a Ragnaros. Yep. So Sludge Belchers help um, you know defend you against aggro. Ragnaros is good against control matchups. Uh, and he's taken out one Haunted Reaper. He's taken out one Pilot of Treader. He's got no Divine Favor, which can be a really dead um, dead card in an aggro meta. Yep. Uh, not that we're in one necessarily. And he has no Loathe Heb. Uh, and then Kalento has one Eldor Peacekeeper. Uh, he also has two Keepers of Alderman, but he has no Blessing of Kings and no Consecration. Right. So you can kind of see they're relatively minor changes, but you know you have to identify what you're facing and then make little decisions like that yep. to kind of help you deal with uh, it and your, your win rate will improve as a result. So that's uh, this is the list we're going to see though cool. uh, in action. So let's hop into a couple of games. Let's do it. So this is our first game, uh, Paladin Mirror. And yeah, just kind of expanding on what I was saying before, I hadn't really played this deck, but I played 12 games in the last 24 hours and won eight and lost four. Okay. So that's a good that indication is a, that of, is good. of why, and you know, I'm like in the kind of rank 14, as you can see. Yep. Um, but that's a good indication of how how strong this deck is, yep. and and people's kind of complaints about it um, are largely that it kind of the decision making is arguably less complicated than in other decks. Um, that the the base minions are kind of so strong that they can carry you. Uh, and there's some truth to that. Paladin does have really, really strong minions. It's got a good, good strong curve. Obviously, you don't always draw into that. It can be quite awkward when you don't. Um, but that goes for any deck. Yeah. So, yeah, whether be nerfed a little bit, I'm not too sure. I mean, it's, its stats could be brought down just a little. And I mean, it is, it is kind of a bit of a joke once you play that mysterious challenger, how quickly you can basically end a game. Yeah, but by the same token, you anybody who plays a lot of Hearthstone knows the order that the secrets are going to trigger. Yeah. And so you know that um, you know they've got two uh, Avengers. You know that they've got uh, two Noble Sacrifices. And then so once other secrets have been played, you know you can kind of cross them off the list. Yep. And that's what's kind of cool about the way things have developed since. Um, Secret Paladin rose to popularity is that people have got their head around how to try and counter Mysterious Challenger right. but a lot of the time it is just dependent on what the board state is and what tools you have in your hand because you know on turn 6 they're going to be trying to play that so you can try and prep for it yep. um, and so there are definitely ways to play around it but uh, yeah like I, I kind of get some satisfaction out of going okay I'm going to attack and then Noble Sacrifice is going to proc. Uh, and then, you know, that's going to trigger Revenge. So one of the minions is going to get buffed. Yep. And then Noble, Noble Sacrifice is going to come back via Redemption. And then anything that's left on the board is going to get buffed with Competitive Spirit. Yep. So, you know, it's 
when you know how to kind of deal with that. Which um, I don't. Yes. Just as an aside. Yes. Because I have been totally destroyed by so many of these builds. Uh, so, by the way, uh, I just used the cons Consecration pretty cheaply there just to get rid of the Doomsayer. Yeah. And that's because I just didn't really want to lose tempo here. Yeah. Uh, so I spent a lot of resources to get rid of that Doomsayer, but I wanted to keep my board presence. I'm still not entirely sure what I'm facing, although, you know, I'm assuming since I've seen two Murlocs it's that, Murloc probably, that it's yeah. Yeah, an OTK Murloc deck. Um, so I pretty much just want to try and push as hard as I can right now. Yep. Uh, and just keep my board strong, um, especially since I know that I'm going into a Mysterious Challenger turn. Uh, so I decide to, yeah, use uh, the mini bot there because then if he consecrates, the extra damage doesn't matter, and hold on to my weapon um, for another turn. And yeah, so that was pretty much the right call because he has to attack into the mini bot to clear it, which is not a great use of a true silver. Um, and then I go into my Christmas tree turn. <laughs> Your Christmas tree turn is and such it was, a beautifully apt description. And it was also so lovely of him to proc my Avenge yeah. before I played my Challenger, so I get it again. Yeah. That is wonderful. Yeah. Look at that. It is a beautiful thing, i got to say. It's a beautiful feeling when you when you get all those little secrets just <laughs> popping up like that. Yeah, I, I, think the, I think the thing with uh, Secret Paladin is that it's... Annoying when it's all you see on the ladder. Yeah. You know, and that goes for any deck. If you're just facing, going up against face hunters, that's not really fun. I mean, I guess if you've got, if you're strongly teched against it and you're doing really well, then it's okay. But variety is what we want. And right now in Hearthstone, there's more variety on the ladder than um, there has been in a really long time. Yeah. So Secret Paladin has its place amongst that, I think. Oh, absolutely. Um, so, okay, so no, Noble Sacrifice procs, then Avenge procs, of course it goes in the Mysterious Challenger, <laughs> and then, oh, no, oh, okay, I've, I'd already played that one. Yeah, the, the Secrets list uh, is pretty, pretty static now, actually. Yeah. Um, you know, unless you want to throw in an eye for an eye or something to try and throw your opponent off uh, but it doesn't it, I mean, it's, it's just so strong even when your opponent can deal with it effectively yeah that you just you, you know you stick with what with what works um, because you know a lot of the secrets can be used strategically outside that mysterious challenger turn right like for instance when you get your mysterious challenger off bad phrasing there <laughs> um, uh, like it's a shame that you know that your noble sacrifice is going to be the minion that comes back via redemption yep. whereas you prefer it to be like a you know a shielded mini bot or um, I mean you know a big minion or a sticky minion yep. you know that's got a divine shield or has a death rattle or something along those lines what are the circumstances where you wouldn't play mysterious challenger on your sixth turn like it I mean, obviously, you want to have some minions on the board, right? I, ideally, yes. Yeah, ideally, you do. But, no, I mean, I think it's such a... If you can play it on curve, yeah. unless you're just about to die and you have to do something really defensive, you should just play it. Right. All right, so let's hop into one more game and uh, we'll see some more Christmas reaction. Wonderful. This is our second game, and I just wanted to... You know how much I love Hunters. Yep, I, I like, Hunters are your absolute favourite. I know they this are. about you, Cam. They are. You love playing against face Hunters. Although, yeah, I mean, this, this, is, this is an aggressive Hunter, but it's probably more of a hybrid Hunter, I guess. Right. Because uh, he doesn't quite put as much pressure on me as he could, but this is still a pretty fun game. And Great starting also, hand also points out just some of the strategy and thinking uh, involved in different class matchups. Cool. Um, so here I've got the coin, so I can either play Shielded Minibot or Haunted Creeper. Mm -hmm. And what I'm basically thinking is, well, a lot of Face Hunter's minions have one health, so they could pr pop the um, Minibot's shield, but his ideal is probably going to be to play a Knife Juggler. Yep. And so having two damage, being able to get rid of the Knife Juggler is what I want to do. So that's why I decided to go with 
the mini bot over the haunted creeper and yep worst case scenario for him which is why i think it's more hunt hybrid because it's very unlikely for a face hunter to not have a minion to play uh at the start of the game but i yeah that hero power is great because it lets me establish board so now i've got both on the board and uh pretty much just scratching my head about what he's gonna do next right but of course he hits me in the face <laughs> as they are want to do. So you've got um, a fair few secrets in I've, your hand. I'm not that happy about having all these secrets, yeah. but if I can build the board, it's it's okay because yep. I can turn them into momentum. Uh, so I basically decide to get rid of the shield, but not expend one of my minions um, taking it out. So I want to try and force him to make the trade. Yep. Um, either that or he'll just hit me in the face and then I'll use my weapon on the next turn to get rid of it and maintain my board. Uh, but instead, he plays a secret, and Deal. then, yeah, right. and then, in like the biggest tell ever, decides to pop the divine shield. <laughs> and I mean, I already know exactly what that secret that is. That I mean, face hunters really only run explosive trap, but yeah. that just says, "Yep, that yeah. is one hundred percent explosive trap," and he thinks he's going to decimate my board. Yeah. So... How do you deal with Explosive Trap? Because oh, I'm still not entirely sure. You're, you're going to love this sequence, Lucy. All right. So I play a Haunted Creeper. Mm -hmm. Then I play Competitive Spirit. Because I know that I'm going to be able to buff two Haunted Creepers and a Shield of Minibot out of Explosive um, Trap range. Yep. And then I'm going to... And I play my Avenge. And I also figure that I'm just going to use my um, dudes yep. to trade. Right. And that's the thing is, like, you don't have to pop the trap. If he plays any minions, I'm going to deal with them without triggering it. Yeah. So the idea is that I deal with his minions, whatever he plays, and build up a big enough board so that I can then just sweep um, sweep him down, you know, knock yep. him down. That's um, very clever. Usually I would just go, oh, screw it, and then just, you know, oh, knowing how to play, my minions. Knowing how to play round sequences is definitely a key, key part of, you know, your thinking with Hearthstone. What do you call, um, just out of curiosity... Uh, a friend told me that you call these little, Justice. like, the paladins, little minions, <laughs> the guys, which I quite enjoy. Uh, I thought they were known as dudes. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's what, that's what all Both the... Both work. That's what all the American guys call Both them. work. Uh, so anyway, so I've got six minions on board, so I decide not to play a dude because I don't want to have my board full and not be able to play the Mysterious Challenger. Mm -hmm. Um there's the danger that he'll kill one of the creepers and my board will be full when I went down to play the challenger. Yep. But that's a risk I can take. And this is the best thing that happens in the entire game. <laughs> he gets Huffer, he attacks my face, and Noble Sacrifice triggers, and his Huffer is gone. Oh, so beautiful thing. Three mana of his wasted for one mana of mine. And then I get the Avenge as well in preparation for my mysterious challenger turn. So good. Like when it works out, man, oh, it it's is so, so good. So beautiful, yeah. Because I'm just sitting here just going, okay, four of my minions aren't going to get killed by the explosive trap, so yep. I'm just going to trigger it. Because I'm only going to lose two minions, so why not? So yeah. I trigger the explosive trap, and then he's still he's he's got another trap up in the meantime, so I'm not too sure what that is. Um, but thinking about it, I figure it could be bear trap. So I want to proc that yep. by attacking face, and yeah, I use two. I use the two attack minions, so I've got the three one to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And then I hit him, and then I play my mysterious challenger. Oh, look at that! It's, it's almost so, cruel. Oh, it's just so satisfying. Yeah, there yeah, you're all Christmas treat up now. I mean, what, like, what's, I mean, and I know I'm, like, at 16 health, and so, theoretically, let's say he plays Unleash the Hounds and Kill Command. So, I'm actually not, you know, he doesn't necessarily have to proc anything. He could just try and um, just, just kill me, but, I mean, I'm very, very close. Well, I've got, I've got lethal, actually, with the board as it stands. Anyway, so knife juggler into unleash the hounds. It's not a, is not a bad, a pretty good, not play. a bad play. Yeah. Um, but he's still on the defensive, and that's you know, that's what you want. Yeah. The fact that he has to actually trade in one of the hounds, um, try and and then yeah, I get my creeper, creeper back. back, 
and then I BM him a little bit. Because <laughs> I'm just like, I don't think you're going to win this game, man. Yeah. <laughs> He's thinking about it. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's... Especially when you're roping, it, uh, it can get a bit intense with all the secrets. Yeah. Uh, so you kind of need to have the mental checklist in your head, I guess. And so I didn't have lethal at the end of that. Um, and then I drew Keeper of Alderman. So I can buff my this Creeper guy. up to three attack. Yep. And then I've got exactly. And he quits. <laughs> Does he? Yep. Right before. Yep. I think that's... I think that's mean. But then I say, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Cam, that was awesome. I am very keen to get back into Secret Paladin. Mm. As I said, it was a favourite of mine a couple of seasons ago. Yeah, I've, I've, I'm surprised at how much I've enjoyed playing it. Yeah. It's been, it's been really fun. It's very gratifying mm. uh, when you get that perfect sequence. Mm. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We will be back shortly with yep. another deck that we will be looking at um, to basically help you and me become yep. better Hearthstone players. And if you actually want to... Tell us what deck you want us to run through. Tweet at Jazzabration or at Luce O'Brien and, um, and let us know. Absolutely. Because I've, I've got a list and I'm just going to work my way through them. But if you guys have something in particular, we can, we can do that instead. Absolutely. And for more on Hearthstone, as always, stick with IGN. Bye. Bye.